Good day again, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back together. Uh, we continue with just revising and looking at, uh, you know, this is kind of a post-mortem of, uh, you know, the prelims. Okay, and I'm using the paper that was written in Gauteng. And uh, by the way, uh, it's not exclusively uh, for Gauteng. Uh, this is for all the provinces. It's applicable. Okay. Um, and by the way, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you subscribe to our channel and become part of the family. Okay, we are learning, we are learning, we are learning a lot. And please just invite as many, as many as you possibly can. Right, so I'm going to be looking at uh, question three today, continuing on organic chemistry. All right, so um, this has to do usually with intermolecular forces, right? So we're going to look at that quickly. All right. Um, so they say we've got compound A, B, and C that are used to investigate a factor which influences the boiling uh, points of organic compounds. All right. They say the results of the investigation are given in the table below. Okay. So there they give us those three uh, organic compounds. And in this case, they give us the boiling point thereof. Right, so first of all, I want you to notice that uh, A and B, all of them are actually alcohols, right? But if you look at, uh, uh, in fact, uh, actually all of them uh, have got four carbons, right? So that's butane one, that's butane two. So these are positional isomers of each other, all right? Um, uh, and if we look at C, C has got three carbons in the parent chain and one. So it's got four carbons as well. But the only uh, difference is that um, in this case, it's a chain isomer, right? Um, so in this case, you, you, you note that there's a difference uh, between all of those, right? Uh, these ones are chain isomers of each other. And these two are positional isomers of each other. Right. So uh, if we uh, have to look at the question, they say, is this a fair investigation? OK, choose yes or no. Um, I would say no. And the reason for that. So for 3.1, uh, I would definitely say that's a no. And the reason why it's a no, it's because remember, in order for you to have a fair test, you always need to have only one independent variable. So it means that if I'm going to have run three tests, there should only be one thing. So for instance, if I take temperature as my independent variable, the only difference between those three tests I'm running should be temperature. But if I look at this, I've got two differences. First, position. Second, it's a chain isomer, right? So in this case, it would definitely not be a fair test to test all of those three uh, with each other. So uh, they say, give a reason for your answer to 3.1. Okay, so in this case, um, there's more than one independent variable. There's uh, more than one, yeah, more than one independent variable, right? Uh, one independent variable. So I'm just going to call it IV. All right. So they say fully explain the difference in the boiling points uh, of compound B and C. Right. Now we're only looking at compound B and C. Now notice compound B is a straight chain, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, alcohol, right? And in this case, you've got compound C, which is a you know which which has a branch right it, it has a branch so in this case uh, it would obviously have a lesser surface area so what we would do in answering that would first of all just acknowledge the difference between them all right so i can say well uh, compound a or rather uh, yeah sorry we com we're comparing b and c uh, so we can say compound b right uh, is a straight chain isomer Okay, so it has a greater surface area. All right. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So I can say compound B uh, is a straight chain isomer. Yeah, I'm sure you get it. I don't need to write this in full, right? And then compound C, okay, is 
um, um, is more branched, right? More branched. So uh, compound C has a lesser or has a lesser surface area than A. So B, straight chain with greater surface area. Okay. Right. With greater surface area. C is branched with a lesser surface area. And we know that intermolecular forces increase with an increase in surface area, right? So the greater the surface area, the stronger the intermolecular forces. So I'll say, well, intermolecular forces increase, okay, with an increase in surface area, with an increase in surface area. So what therefore? It means that more energy is required and you'll notice once again uh, if you go back to our video or uh, to our series or our playlist on organic chemistry you'll see that uh, we do mention this right so more energy is required to separate uh, to separate molecules of a okay uh, sorry of b than that of c and so as a result uh, uh, b requires more uh, it has got a greater boiling point right and it, it makes sense why B has a larger boiling point than um, than C, right? Okay, so I hope you understood that. Uh, obviously, I narrated it. You can just write it in the way that feels comfortable to you. Right, uh, the next one, they say define the term positional isomer. Remember, uh, generally speaking, we say that isomers, um, you know, we, we, we say... Um, these are compounds, okay, with the same molecular formula, uh, but different structural composition or structural formulae, right? Uh, but in this case, we are more specific. We want to know about a positional isomer. And why is a, a positional isomer different? Okay, we say, well, they've got the same molecular formula, right? But they've got uh, um, uh, different positions, rather, uh, of the... Um, yeah, or of uh, the different position of, you know, the the functional group. Um, so in this case, our functional group is OH. So uh, same molecular formula, but different position of the functional group. Uh, ladies and gents, I'm very lazy to write that down. Uh, I'm sure you know it and you would obviously write that down for yourself, right? Um, just make sure that you, you, you do specify uh, that it's the different position. Don't just tell us about it having, uh, you know, different structural formula. Tell us exactly what is different. And in this case, it's the position of the functional group. Okay, right. And then uh, the next question, um, they say from compound A, B, and C, uh, choose a letter that represents each of the following. Okay, uh, they say a positional isomer Okay, so we know positional isomer. Uh, uh, so B is the positional isomer of C, right? Okay, so um, let's say 3.5.1. Okay, so B and C are, are positional isomers of each other. And then they say a tertiary alcohol. Okay, um, so if we wanted to get a tertiary alcohol, so this guy, yeah, definitely this would be a tertiary alcohol, right? Um, so in this case, it would definitely be, uh, oh, look at me. I said B and C there instead of saying uh, A and B. Sorry about that. So A and B are functional isomers of each other. So you can either choose one of them, choose either one of them. So 3.5.2, uh, a tertiary alcohol. Um, in this case, that would be C, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, so here I was supposed to say A and B. Uh, a and B. And um, so which which one is a, a tertiary alcohol? We said it's C, right? And they want a reason for that. Okay. And the reason for that is that obviously the carbon that is bonded to the functional group. So if you look at what this guy would look like, there's an OH there, but that carbon is actually surrounded 
by uh, three other carbons. So there's the carbon that has the functional group, but how many carbons are next to it? Directly linked to it, there's three carbons, okay? So you can say that, that the carbon that has the functional group, okay, has three other carbons around it, okay? Right, so, um, uh, of course, we would know for, the, you know, for uh, the other alcohols, uh, the primary alcohol as well as the secondary alcohol. The primary has got only one carbon, all right, next to it. Uh, the secondary alcohol has got only two carbons next to it. So, uh, the let's continue to the next questions. So, 3.6.2, now we want to know, okay, they say the graph below represents a relationship between vapor pressure and uh and temperature of a compound that is uh, uh and compound a rather that is butane one all right so notice this uh the greater uh the temperature the more the temperature that vapor pressure seems to uh you know seems to increase and i mean i, I think it would make sense that you know the higher the temperature the more uh, chances that something would evaporate and turn into vapor, right? Um, so in this case, we've got, they say write down the value of X. Now, I want you to notice something about X. This is 117 degrees. But if you go back to that table there, at 117 degrees, this is what we call our boiling point. But what is boiling point by definition? We say this is the temperature, or it's the temperature at which the uh, vapor pressure of a compound, of a molecule, is equal to the atmospheric pressure, right? So it means at that temperature, um, the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. And what is atmospheric pressure? In this case, we say it's 101.3 kilopascals. Uh, of course, you can round it off to 100 kilopascals, or you can just simply say it's one atmosphere, right? Uh, nothing wrong with that. Right, so um, so that's the value at X. And 3.6, sorry, this was 3.6.1 and 3.6.2. Okay, they say redraw the curve uh, in the answer book on the same set of axes. And what will you do? Sketch the curve that will be obtained from C, from compound C. So we want a curve for compound C. Um, they say clearly label the curves A and C indicate the relevant boiling points, blah, 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 blah. Okay, right. So, of course, if we already have the graph, so I'm just going to take this up a little bit. Okay, so if we already have the graph, Okay, and we know this is going to be our temperature, and we know this is in degrees, right? So that's in degrees Celsius, okay, and this is vapor pressure, okay, and this is kilopascals. Um, I'm just going to make this as simple as possible. So we already had the graph, uh, this is the graph of A. We know the vapor pressure as well as... Um, you know the boiling point of it okay now what would the graph of uh, c look like remember that c would have a lower boiling point uh, than than a right and so if it has a lower boiling point the vapor pressure would actually be higher right so the graph of c in terms of vapor pressure should be higher than that of a isn't it so it would kind of follow the same curve, but in this case, with a higher vapor pressure. So remember for this one, we know that we had, you know, at 117, we know that our boiling point was, okay, uh, our boiling point was X, which was, um, uh, uh, sorry, 101.3 kilopascals, right? So we know this value would be 101.3. Uh, but what about this one? Okay, in fact, I should have actually made it cross there. Right, so what about uh, for, for, for C, right? When is that boiling point? Of course, that boiling point would be actually there at 82. So I would have my value there at 82 degrees. 
okay so you'd have 82 here it's actually equal to 101.3 and here 117 also equal to 101.3 so uh, by the way you need to uh, you know show the label on our graphs so this uh, would be the graph for a and this would be the graph for c okay right and we would have scored ourselves that 13 marks over there and that's it that's how the cookie crumbles right so um i hope that uh, you will remember to subscribe if you haven't all right we'll be treating uh, question four next okay otherwise i'll see you guys next time and uh, please don't forget for those of you who still need, need help with physical science or chemistry uh, uh, or even mathematics please don't forget to um you know just send us that email uh, at um, the email is info at mlungisimkosi.co.za. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time as you prepare for those exams. Shop, shop.